And welcome, everybody, to The Huddle, King of Nines streaming weekly sports talk show every week at this time, every Tuesday at this time. I'm Jason Barr, joined by Pat Paris. Pat, good afternoon. How are you today? Doing pretty well, Jason. Excited about our guest who will be joining us shortly. Yeah, just a little bit. We'll have Dr. Robert Robbins. He is the president of the University of Arizona and a big sports fan. He is very knowledgeable about the University of Arizona athletics teams and uh We'll get some of his insights and pick his brain a little bit. And, uh, you know, I don't know how much we're going to specifically talk about each game with him, but certainly, Pat, you and I will start with last week's game for Arizona football. Look, I mean, it's a layup to sit here and pick up, pick on the defense. Obviously, they gave up nine yards per play. Obviously, Jay did not ran all over them, right? We don't, you know, we know that. We don't need to slam the defense. They know what went wrong. But, but I'll tell you what, they've got a chance to turn it around this week because, you know, it's silly to think about or crazy to think about a must-win situation for Arizona, but they need to win this or else they take a step backward to last year. And they can't beat a Colorado team that's got lost by more than 25 points a game for their first four games. Well, yeah, I, I think that's 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 an obvious uh, scenario, as you just pointed out. It, it's it's not a must win, but they need to win this game. And, and I, I, I think you have to you have to see when you make progress as a program uh, in year two with Jed Fish. This is how you look to see if you made progress. D yes, you got beat by Cal. You got beaten a lot of facets of the game by Cal. How do you then respond? What kind of adjustments do you make during the week? And then you play a Colorado team that's probably uh, at the bottom of, of the Pac-12 standings for a reason and winless for a reason. Um, but I'm looking forward to seeing um, not just adjustments during the week, Jason, but maybe some better adjustments within the game, um, especially in the second half where we didn't see a lot of adjustments on the Arizona sideline. We saw a lot of adjustments on the Cal sideline. All right, so talking U of A football and much more, we're going to bring in our special guest now. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Robert Robbins. I'm Jason Barr along with Pat Paris here on The Huddle. Uh, we're so glad you're with us here on this Tuesday. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thank you. Before we get into some specifics in each of the teams, you are a very big sports fan. I don't know if everybody in the community knows that. Certainly some people know. Just first off, tell us, you know, how you got started. Uh, you know, you grew up in southern Mississippi, I believe. Uh, were you a big, span, a big sports fan growing up? What were the teams that you rooted for? Uh, how did you become such a big sports fan? I don't know. I, I guess when you grow up in a small town in Mississippi, uh, you know, you play all three of the major sports at the time, football, basketball, and baseball. And uh, I was fortunate to be my uh, maternal grandparents on the campus of a, uh, a junior college there called Jones Junior College, who in 1968 won the uh, Junior College National Championship. And I, I pretty much went to every practice as far as I can remember back, e even a little kid, before I started school. Uh, I would go to practices and then I would race home after school and try to go to as many practices as I could, football, basketball, and baseball. So I, I kind of grew up on campus going to all these practices and then, of course, played sports. So uh, I, I was first and foremost a... I think it's ironic, a Jones Junior College Bobcat fan, and now <laughs> Wildcats uh, here that I uh, that I root for. And growing up, you know, I I I liked uh, you know all all aspects of uh, athletics because I think it teaches discipline, uh, time management, uh, teamwork, uh, goal uh, setting, and achievement. So I'm a huge fan. So I guess that that begs the question: Were you any good at any of those three sports—basketball, baseball, or football? Yeah, you know, Pat. The older I get, the better my career was. So uh, <laughs> I, I was looking back on it. I was I was actually great. But uh, you know, when you look back uh, at some of the press clippings, I think my sons uh, showed me that uh, my high school uh, football coach, which I was probably best in 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 football, was a quarterback. 
but I enjoyed all three of them. Uh, but probably, you know, I was I was going to go try and play college football as a quarterback. And of course, you, you've seen me. I'm I'm a little small for playing in the SEC. And you know, when every where you grow up uh, playing quarterback in Mississippi in those days, everybody thought they were going to be the next uh, Archie Manning. But uh, I, I I wasn't I wasn't that good. Yeah, you have better hands for surgery than uh, than for throwing football. Yes, we got to have good hands if you're yes. if you're if you're doing uh, surgery. Were you uh, are you still a big Ole Miss fan? I'm guessing if that's where your alma mater. Yeah, and I know you, you know spent, I, I didn't. A lot of time I, at Stanford too. Yeah, I I'd probably be more of a, a Stanford fan. Although I am an Arizona fan first and foremost. Let's get that straight. And got it. Uh, I really I, I loved your analysis of the at halftime. You know, it's why you have to play sixty minutes because at halftime uh, we look pretty good. They made great adjustments and we didn't. Uh, and, you know, it's even easy for me to, to pile on and say, uh, you know, we couldn't stop the run. So my my looking forward in uh, this week is Colorado is going to be really desperate for a win. They've got Arizona circled on their calendar is, well, this is one we can win. So we have to be uh, just as desperate and just to determine and be prepared and I'm confident that uh, that Coach uh, Fish and his staff are going to have them ready to go. Yeah, Dr. Robbins. Um, first of all, we got a, a comment. If we want to drop that in real quick, we like to drop in our comments every once in a while. Celine says, "Love it." Hi, Dr. Robbins. Bear down. We all we all say bear down as well. Um, we appreciate you taking the time. I, I talked to Dave Hickey. Uh, for our football special before the season started. And I, I asked him about entering year two uh, because Jed Fish took over a team that, that weren't all his players. Now he's got his players. Do you look at this as year one? He said, no, we still look at the scoreboard. <laughs> you still, you still got to win games. How do you look at, at season two? Is it season two for Jed Fish or is it his first real season? I mean, how do you look at it? No, I look at it as season two uh, because – he, he was the coach of record last year. And uh, this team, I think we could all agree, uh, looks, feels, uh, acts a lot different than the team he had last year. He's just gotten more tools. And because he and his staff went out and recruited these players, and it's a noticeable difference. And I'm uh, incredibly grateful to Coach Fish and all the staff that he brought here to, to get these players. But they have to win games. And, um, you know, I, I said double in total, that puts you at two. That's where you are now. Uh, you know, I, I would love to see them win more games uh, and because that's how you're going to be assessed in this business. It's a, uh, it's, a, it's a brutal business, and it is tough, as you both know better than I am, to win a game uh, at, at the major college level. So it's going to be a lot of hard work, but I – you know, I'd really hoped that we could uh, uh, win the Cal game. I thought we matched up well with them. It, it was a little, uh, you know, what they did in South Bend. I mean, they almost knocked off Notre Dame. I don't think Notre Dame is as good as they've been uh, in the past and certainly in the preseason polls, but Cal's tough. And I, I actually stayed behind after the game to shake uh, Mr. Ott's hand and tell him that, you know, that was a heck of a, of a performance, and he, he really gashed us. Uh, but he was uh, very gracious and a uh, 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 good young man to, to, to shake my hand and talk to me. But he put on a performance. But that was one up front uh, with his offensive line making those big holes. And you actually had known Jed Fish before this interview process. I believe you talked to him a few years ago uh, w when there was an opening. What was it about him? that impressed you so much that you wanted to make him the head coach here at Arizona when a lot of people thought maybe at the time uh, the, the university should go with somebody who had more Wildcat ties. Yeah, more Wildcat ties and experience being a head coach. He had he had two games under his belt as an interim at UCLA. I, I just saw a passion and a commitment to excellence uh, in thought our program uh, needed that excitement, um, that enthusiasm, uh, commitment to the academic side, as well as recruiting the right kind of players that fit, uh, you know, our core values here at the University of Arizona. 
And I think Coach Fish has done that. Um, he had a, an incredible uh, experience in his background at being at many different places and learning from really some of the masters in college football. So I, I just thought uh, his enthusiasm, his experience at working with all of these uh, uh, great coaches of which, you know, Dave Hickey and I spoke to all of them and there, there are many hall of fame coaches that he's, uh, that he's coached with and learned from. And they were all very, very high on him, despite the fact that he didn't have head coaching experience or any ties to Arizona. And you pointed it out, the, his ability to sell this program and get these uh, these players to come here has, has been uh, very impressive here in year two. I, I want to ask you specifically about one player and your thoughts about Jacob Cowing. This is a, this is a young man that likely can play on Sunday uh, he is uh, really, uh, right now, he's, he's, he's proving to be the best receiver in the Pac-12 in just his first year at the University of Arizona. What do you like about his skill set? He's tough as can be. He is, uh, he is uh, committed. He's mature, uh, and it provides incredible leadership in the locker room. Um, you knew he was special. I mean, you just look at uh, his career at, at UTEP before he came, came over to Arizona. So I, I think uh, you're right. He's got a bright future playing on Sunday, but he is tough. I mean, uh, I, I heard him on the sideline uh, during the game at Cal uh, say that, you know, his leg was really hurting him. He's been suffering from, I think, some hamstring uh, tightness. And, and uh, I know he was in pain. He played through it. Um, so he, he is an incredible player, uh, a great leader, and we're very fortunate to have him. Jason Barr, Pat Harris, talking with Dr. Robert Roberts, the president of the University of Arizona. We're talking sports. Certainly the red-blue game for Arizona men's basketball is uh, this coming Friday night. Uh, first off, can you tell us what the uniforms were going to be? And, uh, <laughs> and second of all, at, at what point did you know you made the right hire with Tommy Lloyd? Was it right out of the gate, or was there a certain aha moment last year when you said, ha, ah, we got this one right? Well, I, I think it was during the interview process. I mean, he he was, uh, you know, for both of these searches, uh, Dave Hickey, I was there watching him go through the process. And it was a very deliberative, uh, purposeful project uh, process for both of these hires. Um, they're both young. They're both aggressive. They both have uh, all of the core values that, uh, that we at the university have starting number one with integrity. Uh, and, uh, you know, I just think that it, they're, they're such a great fit for this program that, that needed, um, that needed a, uh, a restart, uh, a, a and a recommitment to excellence. And, uh, you know, just, we had an incredible number of people, both in the football and the basketball search that um, that were well qualified and could have done these jobs. But uh, during the process, I think Dave was just sold and, and I concurred with his his decisions uh, on both of these guys. And and I knew Tommy, uh, you know, was going to be incredibly driven. Uh, he he uh, had been around an excellent pro. Cades, Coach Few is one of the greats. Uh, and he was right there side by side with him. So, um, you know, it was it was tough losing Coach Miller. Um, I, I wish him well. He's he's back at Xavier and um, I, I know he's going to have success. But Tommy Lloyd is going to be hopefully around Arizona basketball uh, for a long, long time. And I think he's going to be very successful. I'm, I'm guessing the New York firm has a little red, a little white, and a little blue in it, but you're not going to really give us any more hints than that, I'm sure. Well, I, if I knew, I, <laughs> I, I, I have no idea. I, I don't, so you'll I, be excited I, like us on I Wednesday. will, and I, yeah. I'll be surprised like you. Good, good. Uh, real quick about the, you know, not only basketball, football the same way, the transfer portal, it, it has completely changed the complexion of a rebuild or a, a, a way to, to keep your program, you know, uh, at the forefront. Uh, tell me your thoughts about the, the transfer portal. Well, it, it adds another layer of complexity to the coaching staff because they have to, they have to recruit and retain their, their 
uh, almost on a weekly basis. If people aren't getting enough playing time or they're not happy with the way things are going, they can just pick up and go go somewhere else. So I think it's uh, I think it's made uh, a job that is very very difficult. Uh, even more difficult, um, you know, with in, both NIL and the transfer portal. So, um, you know, the coaches have got to convince players to come here. They've got to buy into the process and the system. And then uh, you've got to retain them and keep them. Certainly you oversee the entire university, not just athletics. But from the athletic uh, point of view, what keeps you up at night? What's the biggest challenge? Is it all the upgraded the facilities and the money that that takes? Is it the having to evolve with the times with the transfer portal, as Pat just mentioned, in the NIL? Is it uh, keeping track of coaches around the country in case somebody might might uh, uh, want to leave or you have an, an opening? What what keeps you up at night as university president when, when it comes to the athletic part of your job? Not much. I, I, I have a f- uh, uh, full confidence in Dave. Uh, to do his job, um, but I, uh, you know, I worry about all aspects of the university. Uh, you know, the the business school, the law school, uh, undergraduates, um, college of science, all the great programs we have here, the medical school. So I'm I'm constantly worried about everything, but I know we've got great leaders in all of these areas. So I sleep very well at night. <laughs> uh, not too much bothers me, you know. Uh, in, in my previous life, uh, I, I didn't sleep, you know, probably one or two nights every week operating all night. And, uh, you know, the stakes were really high there for sure. So I, I, I feel good about where we are as a university. And, you know, all the things that you mentioned are certainly contribute to make these jobs uh, even more difficult. But I think that we've got the people uh, from from the uh, athletic director and the administrators to all of our coaches. I love our coaches. They're young. They are hungry. Um, as I keep saying, they have the right values, uh, starting with integrity. And not only do they want to win, I, I say, you know, I would love to see us win a national championship in every single sport. It's not going to happen, obviously, but that should be our goal. Uh, and But more importantly, I think, is that our uh, GPA for for our student athletes has continued to rise uh, every year that uh, Dave Hickey and I have been here. That's what I think is is really most important. Um, you, obviously, you need to win. You know, the ninety eight percent of individuals who are going to go on in, in life and not uh, be a professional in their sport. We want to prepare them to have a very productive, successful, uh, happy life. And and we believe that uh, having a a good foundation and great University of Arizona degree will help them uh, simply achieve their hopes and dreams and go on and make the world a better place. That's uh, I say that every day here. Uh, I'm glad, glad to hear you're getting good night's sleep. That's, that's always important. Uh, I'm wondering how the night of sleep was after, uh, like a, a lot of Wildcat fans after UCLA and USC uh, said they were leaving the conference. Uh, there were some sleepless nights for us. A lot of us were, you know, let's, let's go, let's make a move, let's make a move. Cooler heads prevail. Tell me your thoughts about not, you know, rushing into something. You guys stayed the course and you're still in the Pac-12. Oh, yeah. I think that, you know, every school has to decide their, you know, what's best for them. Uh, I was disappointed, obviously, because I got to the Pac-12 uh, after spending almost uh, you know 25 years at Stanford. I, I just have always loved the Pac-12 for the commitment to uh, excellence, uh, primarily in the academic side, but also uh, in the sports side as well obviously multiple national championships across uh, the Pac-12 and and many sports. We have not been as good as we need to be uh, in the last decade in terms of uh, men's basketball, football, uh, women's basketball, certainly a lot better in the last couple of years. I would even argue maybe the best conference. So, um, and we've always been really good in softball. People are catching up. But I, I just uh, I love the Pac-12, and so it was a big disappointment uh, 
Um, you know, growing up as a kid, watching USC and UCLA be rivals, and uh, the fact that they're not going to be in our conference anymore, I'm, I'm sad about that. But at the same time, they've got to do what they think is best for them. Uh, going forward, we're in the middle of working on getting a new media deal uh, for uh, the remaining 10 schools that are left in the going back to the future and to the Pac-10. Uh, and my hope is that uh, in the coming months, we'll have a, a, a media deal that will make everybody happy and we'll stay together. And then, you know, we'll, we'll have to look at the landscape about do we uh, consider adding some more teams. But for right now, the 10 of us are, uh, you know, we've got our arms locked together and committed to staying together and, and trying the best deal that we can get uh, so that we can move forward. What are your thoughts on George Klievkov, the Pac-12 commissioner? It seems like he's uh, brutally, maybe I might say, refreshingly honest. And, and when he makes some of the comments that he makes about the schools leaving and some of the schools trying to, some of the conferences trying to poach some other schools, I think there's even been comments about how, uh, you know, this may not work out as, as great for UCLA as, 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 they may, as they may think. Your thoughts on Klievkov and how he's handling the situation? Yeah, I give him I give him a, a score uh, uh, in his first year. I mean, he he stepped into uh, a really tough situation, uh, knowing that our media deal was coming up and his background. I think he's the right person uh, to um, to guide us through this journey of negotiating and getting the best deal that we can get. Uh, and I love that he is, uh, as you say, brutally honest. He tells it like it is. Uh, he holds no punches, and uh, he's the right person at the right time to guide us through this very few months as we as we set the uh, the tone for the future of of our conference. And again, I'll, I'll say I, I'm just proud that Arizona is a member of the of the Pac-12, and uh, and and the shared values that we all have, I, I think, are really really important. And it makes those degrees that our athletes get even more valuable in my opinion. And real quick, you talked about the, the, uh, the, the new television agreement. And, and uh, I, I think ironically, the, the thing a lot of us Arizona fans dislike is those eight o'clock kickoffs, but it's actually the thing that makes the PAC 12 probably the most, uh, you know, the most valuable property for, for late prime time, isn't it? Because you're able to provide uh, something to the, to the national networks, that involves a, a late, late game uh, for those on the East coast and just a little late for us here on the West side. Yeah, I agree. Um, and you know, in Arizona, sometimes it's, uh, it's not so bad starting it a little bit later, certainly after sundown, uh, uh, pack 12 after dark when it's, you know, over degrees. but, um, you know, I, I think we're going to have that problem, uh, as you, as you point out, that's one of the value propositions that we have. We fill that uh, West Coast time zone. Uh, and, you know, unfortunately, it, you know, many of these games are starting after people on the East Coast have all, already gone to bed. The, the so-called, you know, uh, Heisman bias. I think, I think we get shortchanged on that. But it is one of the valuable uh, parts of, of uh, what we have to offer. Uh, I would say parenthetically, though, that, you know, as we look at potential deals with maybe um, non-traditional uh, sports companies like uh, some of the tech companies um, where where streaming will be part of the equation, uh, that that probably helps us with with start times uh, because you can you can choose to stream uh, these games. Uh, uh, later or, or in real time. I, I'd never streamed uh, uh, I, I watched one on Amazon uh, the the other night, the first game, I think it was uh, Chiefs, and, Chiefs and Bills maybe, and it was pretty good. Uh, so I, I, think, I think all options are on the table for us. And like I said, going back to, to George and his team, I, I am confident we're going to get the best deal that uh, we can possibly get. All right. Are we going to see you Friday night at Red Blue? Yes, I will be there. Yeah, it's a great chance to see some of the uh, – to see the newer players, certainly, uh, and how they're going to replace uh, those three draft picks. I'm sure 
I'm sure Tommy Lloyd will get the most out of them. So yeah, I'm certainly. I have not been to a practice, so I, I have not seen them. So I'm I'm gonna be seeing them for the first time, and I'm very excited. All of us are. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Robbins, thank you so much for joining us here on the huddle today. It was great to hear your insights on the Pac-12 and Klievkov and uh, also some of your analysis. Uh, so uh, it's uh, we really appreciate it, and, uh, and thanks again. Yeah, Jason and Pat, thank you for inviting me on your program. And uh, Verde Cats, we'll see you Friday night. All, All right. right. Friday and probably Saturday, too, I, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. All right. Bear down. Thank you go so Cats. Much, Dr. Thanks. Yep. Have a great day. Yeah. Pat, I mean, my takeaway right away, I mean, he right, he piggybacked right off your analysis of the Cal and the halftime adjustments. <laughs> you know, he, he was right there with you. He's like, but I didn't realize that to the second half. <laughs> I learned something new. I didn't realize he was a quarterback and, you know, and then maybe even had aspirations of playing college football. I didn't realize that that was the position he played. And, you know, he can an analyze things like a quarterback, you know, uh, the guy that has to know every position on the field is a quarterback. And the guy that runs the university has to know everything about the university. So I guess it made sense. Yeah, no. And, uh, you know, I just remember him a couple of weeks ago on the field, you know, con- with him and Hiki, we showed some of the video congratulating uh, Jed, Jed Fish on the win. And, uh, you know, we'll see them there in the first row. Uh, and, uh, you know, it was interesting. Also, we talked about Amazon there because we've heard, you know, rumblings that, right. that, that could be a good agreement with the with the Pac-12 with Amazon. So I'm sure that was part of the reason why he was checking that out as well. Yeah, I think that's the future. We, we've talked about it, Jason. You're going to you're going to want your ESPN deal, your Fox deal, you know, uh, any uh, CBS if they if they want to get it on the act, too. But you've got to keep that option open. You've got to have an avenue for streaming. The NFL is the smartest a uh, sports entity out there and they've done it. I know a lot of people it's like Thursday night, how can I watch it on Amazon Prime? But it it's uh you know it it's the it's here. It's not even the future, it's here. So you might as well embrace it and I think the Pac-12 has plans to embrace it. Yeah, so getting back to uh just to finish up here and talk about this Saturday night. Uh you know, I, I always not really a big fan of that whole must win situation, but my goodness, Pat, it did enter my mind. I mean, you know, you have to uh, after what they went through last year uh, to have a Colorado team to come in and be a 17 and a half point favorite. They're playing a quarterback at a second start ever a Colorado team. That's really, really, really struggled. Uh, Colorado looks like maybe Arizona last year. They have right. to, if they're going to take a step up and this to be, and they already have with two wins, but they've got to get a Colorado win here because uh, they, the schedule gets a lot tougher after this. Yeah. And, you know, our, our great analyst, Dr. Robert Robbins, put it best. Sometimes you have to think about what the other team heads into a game, what their mindset is. Colorado looked at this game way back at the start of the season and said, you know, if we struggle a little bit, we're, we're, we, we don't get a win. This is the game we're going to get a win. And they circle that. Now, do I believe Arizona is going to win this game? Yes, I really think they will. But Colorado has the mindset they're going to win this game. You, right. You've got to be ready and you've got to play well. You can't turn the ball over. You've got to get more takeaways than than giveaways. If you do that, then you win the football game. And tackle, tackle the fundamentals. Tackle. Tackle. And, and gap soundness. You know, you've got to get to the holes because they were giant gash, uh, you know, holes that gets gashed right through. Uh, there wasn't anybody filling the gaps. Yeah. All right, Pat. Terrific. Well, we're up against here at the bottom of the hour so. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna. That was a lot there. of fun, Jason. Yeah, yeah. No, I. Uh, it's for the viewers and listeners out there, I ran into Dr. Robbins at U of A night at Chase Field a few weeks ago, and asked him, and he was gracious enough to join us. Yep. So thanks to Dr. Robbins for doing that, Pat. To thank you, and uh, we'll be back here next Tuesday at the same time, talking U of A football and maybe even a little bit about the red and blue game and and what impressed us and what we saw and observed from there. So this has been the huddle on Kgun Nine streaming. Uh, platforms, our weekly talk show. We'll be right back here. For Pat Paris, I'm Jason Barr. See you next time.